Here I'm given the equation y equals 2 to the x and I'm asked to complete the input output table and draw a good graph of the equation on the grid below. So what we're going to do is take each of these input values and replace x with that input value. And I'm going to jump right to my calculator because um, these negative exponents are kind of odd and something that may not be familiar to us um, from previous work. And so we're just going to go right to the calculator and see how the calculator can help us address um, this table. So I'm going to go to my y equals and I'm going to enter 2 and a caret and then I'm going to enter x which is right here with this button. Then I want to go to my table which is in the blue so I need to press second and then graph which gets me to table. My table starts at negative 1 my first input is negative 2, so let's use this arrow key, go up to negative 2, and that is 0.25 as a result. So I'm going to put that in here for my y output, 0.25, negative 1 is 0.5, 0, 2 to the 0 is 1, so that makes sense. 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8, and 2 to the 4th is 16. So in each case I'm inputting this value in for the negative and then computing. Let's look at our graph and how we're going to draw our graph. There aren't any axes drawn for us. So I look at my data and I see that my output data are all positive. So here's how I'm going to draw my axes. I'm going to draw my horizontal axis here. And then I'm going to draw my vertical right in the middle. Then my tick marks, this one's kind of hard to graph because my inputs, my inputs are good. They are all separated by one, but my outputs, see how my outputs go from 0.25, which is a really small number, all the way up to 16. So we're going to have to be a little bit careful. This graph's going to be a little bit rough. So let's see how we're going to put the input tick marks. I'm going to go every other one. So that's one, two, three, four, and that spreads things out pretty well. Same thing has to go in this direction. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. I could put the negative five and the five as well. Um, but we don't have to. So the tick marks are 0.5 apart. As far as the vertical, there should be 20 tick marks here. So my vertical is just going to be tick marks of 1. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm just going to mark every 5. So I have a frame of reference there. 15. And then that gets me to 20. Now when I plot these, I'm going to go ahead and plot these with you so that you can see what I'm doing here. When I go to negative 2.25, that is really hard for me to identify accurately. So I'm just going to do the best I can. So that point is going to be about right there. Negative 1. 0.5 is going to be about right there, and then 0, 1, and then 1, 2, and then 2, 4, and then 3, 8, and then 4 jumps all the way up to 16. So let's go ahead and label these as well. 
And because this is an equation, I am going to connect these. And we don't connect all equations, but I would say it's pretty fair to say most equations that are general equations and not attached to a particular context or word problem, um, the data points will be connected. So if you connect these, what you can do is you can put arrows here. And what's happening is these values are getting closer and closer, but they're not actually ever touching the horizontal axis. So that's really hard to draw accurately, but you can just kind of take your line all the way out there. That kind of, it's really hard to do on this digital tablet. There we go. That's pretty good. Um, needs to be flat and be going down there. So this is called an exponential equation. The variable is in the exponent. And you can see that it's increasing and increasing faster and faster and faster. So the one thing we did not do was label our axes. So don't forget to go back and put an X and a Y to indicate our variables.